ایٹین ہنڈریڈ آورز پاکستان اسٹینڈر ٹائم السلام علیکم دس از ریڈیو پاکستان دا نیوز ریڈ بائی عائشہ نایاب فرسٹ دی ہیڈ لائنز فارن آفس سیز پاکستان وانٹس ٹو فردر اسٹرینتھ سسٹینیبل اینڈ میوچولی بینیفیشل بائیلیٹرل تھائز ود ان یو یو ایس ایڈمنسٹریشن President conferred Hilal Imtiaz military on chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of Jordanian Armed Forces in recognition of his efforts to further strengthen the defense relations between the two countries. Pakistan and Iran have agreed to expedite the process of establishing border markets along the Pakistan border. Minister for Power says the government is endeavoring to generate 80% electricity through indigenous resources by 2030. Information Minister has said the government is committed to make all efforts for protection and welfare of the media workers. The European Parliament has raised questions over India's state sponsorship of fake media outlets and lobbyists that were being used to target Pakistan for a long time. And now the news in detail. Pakistan has said it is looking forward to work with the new U.S. administration to further strengthen the bilateral ties to make it multifaceted, sustainable and mutually beneficial. At his weekly news briefing in Islamabad today, Foreign Office spokesperson Zahid Hafiz Chaudhary said his country wants to continue its partnership with the U.S. to achieve peace, stability and prosperity in the region. The spokesperson said Pak-U.S. bilateral relationship has been a factor for regional peace and stability as a lot has been achieved by working together in the past. Zahid Hafiz Chaudhary said both the countries have worked closely to achieve the shared objective of peace in Afghanistan. He said Pakistan appreciates the progress made in the Afghan peace process, emphasizing the need to further build on it. Responding to a question, the Foreign Office spokesperson urged the international community, including the new U.S. administration, to take notice of grave human rights violations in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. The spokesperson, rejecting formal launch of Ayodhya Mosque project, replacing historical Barbary Mosque on India's Republic Day, said the BJP government cannot mislead the world by such fabrications or hide its deep hatred for minorities in India, especially Muslims. He said he also called on the international community to play its role in preserving the Islamic heritage sites in India from the extremist Hindutva regime and ensure protection of minorities. He said the use of force against the protesting Sikh farmers is not the conduct of a democratic government. It indicates India is not a democratic but a fascist state. President Arif Alvi has conferred Hilal Imtiaz military on chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff of Jordan in Armed Forces, Major General Yusuf Ahmed Al Hanati, in recognition of its efforts to further strengthen the defense relations between Pakistan and Jordan. The investiture ceremony was held at Evanis Sadr in Islamabad today. Talking to the visiting dignitary after the investiture ceremony, the president said Pakistan attaches great importance to its ties with Jordan and wants to maintain mutually beneficial cooperation with the brotherly countries in all fields of mutual interest. He commended the kingdom's efforts to ensure peace and stability in the Middle East region. Chairman Joint Chief of Staff Jordan Armed Forces Major General Yusuf Al Hatani called on Naval Chief Admiral Mohammad Amjad Khan Niazi in Islamabad today matters of mutual interest including bilateral collaboration and regional security were discussed during the meeting both the leaders pledged to further strengthen and diversify the scope of existing bilateral defense relationship Pakistan and Iran have agreed to expedite the process of establishing border markets along the Pakistan border. An agreement to this effect was reached during a meeting between Iran's ambassador to Pakistan, Sayyid Muhammad Ali Husseini, and Minister for Maritime Affairs, Sayyid Ali Haider Zaidi in Islamabad today. Minister for Maritime Affairs, highlighting the traditionally strong fraternal ties between Pakistan and Iran, emphasized the importance of enhancing mutually beneficial collaboration between the two countries in all dimensions. 
The ambassador informed that almost all formalities to establish border markets have been approved from the Irani side. Denmark has expressed its keen interest in developing Pakistan's maritime sector. This was expressed by Danish Ambassador Louis Rohislem to a meeting with Minister of Maritime Affairs Sayyid Ali Haider Zaidi in Islamabad today. The minister apprised the ambassador about the development and progress in the Pakistan maritime sector and also shared his vision and plans to advance the blue economy in Pakistan. Both sides agreed on close coordination and strengthening of ties in the maritime sector as Denmark is one of the largest maritime shipping nations of the world and Pakistan can benefit from its expertise. This is Radio Pakistan. Minister for Power Division Umar Ayub says the government is working to enhance energy mix with the target to generate 80% of electricity through indigenous resources by 2030. Addressing a seminar titled Maritime Economy and its Linkage to National Security organized by National Institute of Maritime Affairs in Slamba today, he said this will greatly help reduce import bill of the country. The minister said this energy mix will include 60% energy through clean and green resources, 10% each from nuclear and third coal resources. He also stressed on development of maritime sectors, saying Pakistan's crucial dependence is on the sector for its trade coupled with national security. Minister for Information and Broadcasting Sayyid Shabli Faraz says the government is committed to make every possible effort for the protection and welfare of the media workers. Addressing a news conference in Islamabad this afternoon, he said a bill for the protection of journalists is under process in Parliament, while another private member bill proposed for the well-being of media workers was rejected in the Senate due to non-cooperation of the opposition. Sayyid Shabli Faraz said the government is also working on provision of health cards to journalists. In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the Indian state terrorism has witnessed an alarming rise since Narendra Modi led fascist Indian government assumed power in the territory in January 2015. An analytical report released by Research Section of Kashmir Media Service today revealed that Indian troops have martyred 1,600 Kashmiris, 134 of them in custody, since the BJP took control of the territory in the form of a coalition government with the People's Democratic Party in 2015 till date. Meanwhile, the All-Party Suryat Conference in a statement in Sirinagar deplored that Indian troops and policemen are committing grave human rights violation in the occupied territory where killing, arrest, torture, destruction of property and molestation of women by the forces personnel had become an order of the day. The APHC appealed to the international community to prevail upon India to resolve the Kashmir dispute in accordance with the Kashmiri's aspirations. The European Parliament has raised questions over India's state sponsorship behind fake media outlets and lobbyists. They were long used to target Pakistan. The European Parliament Special Committee on Foreign Interference in Brussels took up the matter on foreign in interference in geopolitical context at a session held in Brussels with Member of European Parliament Rafael Glucksmann in the chair. It is worth mentioning that EU Disinfo Lab last year had revealed a massive operation to serve Indian interest by targeting international institutions. A systematic disinformation campaign against Pakistan and China was also unveiled by an EU-based organization. In Afghanistan, six militants were killed during clashes with security personnel in Lagham province today. An army statement says clashes erupted when a group of Taliban militants attacked a logistic convoy of the army in Jabin area of El Shing district of the province. On the third day of first cricket test of two match series against Pakistan in Karachi, South Africa scored 187 for four at stump today. South Africa lead by 29 runs. And finally, the weather. Hot, cold and dry weather is likely to prevail over most parts of the country during the next 12 hours, while very cold in Upper Khabar Pakhtunkhwa, Kashmir, Gilgit, Baltistan and Balochistan. And that is the end of the news. For more news and analysis, log on to our website video.gov.pk and also watch live video streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com forward slash Radio Pakistan News Official.